Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm from Amanda Crochets and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make the sedge stitch dishcloth. The sedge stitch dishcloth measures approximately 8 inches across by 8 inches tall. However, you can always change up the sizing of this dishcloth to match your needs. I did not add a border to this dishcloth, but you can certainly do that as well if you'd like. So this is what the dishcloth looks like. And for the sedge stitch, this uses the single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet stitches. So it's all using beginner stitches. And you can see the end result is a little bit of a texture. And it is the same on both sides of your dishcloth. I have made many blankets with this stitch as well as a sedge stitch hot pad, which I will go ahead and link for you. So again, this is the finished result. So let's go ahead and start today's tutorial on making the sedge stitch dishcloth. So for today's tutorial, you're gonna need a size H five millimeter crochet hook. And you're also going to need some cotton yarn. So the cotton yarn that I'm using is Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton. And this is a three and a half ounce skein or 100 gram, 180 yards or 165 meters. And it is considered a number four worsted weight yarn. And it is machine washable and dryable. And it is 100% cotton. I highly recommend using a 100% cotton yarn for your dishcloths as they're going to be a little bit more durable. And the recommended hook size is a US I9 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Now we're going to go down a hook size and use that size H8 or 5 millimeter crochet hook just to get the dishcloth a little bit tighter with your stitches. And the color that you see here is called aqua. And then we have white. And then finally we have that deep teal color. Feel free to use whatever colors you would like, but I just thought these three colors looked really nice together. So let's get started. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and make your slip knot. And for the sedge stitch, you're going to need to make a chain that is a multiple of three. So any t you can take any number times three, and that will get your multiple. So for this dishcloth, I'm going to go ahead and make a chain of 30. So the loop on your hook does not count. You're going to make a yarn over your hook and pull through your hook and that's, or pull through the loop, and that's gonna be one chain. So again, the yarn on your hook does not count as a chain. Yarn over your loop, your hook, and pull that loop through the loop on your hook. So that's your second chain. So three, four, five, six, Continue until you have 30 chains or your desired width, which again is a chain of a multiple of three. Okay, so once you have your 30 chains or your desired width, we can begin row one. For row one, you're going to make a half double crochet and a double crochet into the third chain from your hook. So again, the loop on your hook does not count. You're going to count three chains one, two, and three, and you're gonna be working into that third chain. Now the two skipped stitches, or the two skipped chains, is going to count as your first double crochet. So to make a half double crochet, you're gonna yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And that is your half double crochet. You're going to make a double crochet into that same stitch. So again, yarn over your hook, 
insert your hook into that same chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that completes your double crochet. Next, you're going to skip the next two chains and you're going to work a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet all in that same loop. So one and two, you're going to skip two, and then in that chain after that, you're going to make a single crochet. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then half double crochet, yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then finally, a double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook into that same chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, so you're going to repeat this all the way across until you have three chains remaining. So again, you're going to skip two chains, one and two, and in the chain after that, you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. Skip two chains, in the next stitch, make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. Okay, so keep repeating that all the way across until you have three chains remaining. Okay, so I'm over at the end of my row and I have three chains left. So you're going to go ahead and skip two chains, one and two. And in that very last chain, you're going to go ahead and make a single crochet. So here is what your first row is going to look like. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and chain one and turn and begin row two. So for row two, we're going to make a half double crochet and double crochet into the very first stitch. And the chain one is going to count as your single crochet. So in this very first stitch right here, which is the single crochet that we just made, we're going to make a half double crochet and a double crochet. So half double crochet and double crochet. Okay, next we're going to skip two stitches and in the next stitch we're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet. So we are going to skip the next two stitches which is going to be the double crochet and the half double crochet from the previous row and in the next stitch which is going to be that single crochet that's the stitch that we're going to be working in. And you always want to make sure that you grab both loops of that stitch to get the complete stitch. So single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, all in that same stitch. Skip the next two stitches and in the stitch after that, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet. Repeat that again, skip two stitches, and in the stitch after that, make a single crochet, half double crochet, and a double crochet. Continue this until you have the last remaining stitches of your row and I will show you how to end row two. Ok, 
Okay, so I'm at the end of my row, so I'm going to have two stitches, and it might be a little bit difficult to see, but it's going to be that skip stitch from the very beginning, so it's going to be this stitch right here, so skip the double crochet and the half double crochet from the previous row, and then the stitch after that, you're going to go ahead and make a single crochet into that very last stitch. Now if it's going to be helpful for you, you can always use stitch markers to mark the first and last stitch of each row, and then you can always move it up each row after that. So this is what two rows looks like, and as you can see, your little clusters are going to sit right next to each other on a little bit of a diagonal, just like that. So to repeat this pattern, for the remainder of the pattern, you're just going to go ahead and chain one, and you're going to repeat row two for the pattern. So again, that chain one is going to count as your single crochet. In that very first stitch, you're going to make a half double crochet and a double crochet. You're going to skip the next two stitches. And in the stitch after that, you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and a double crochet. And then you're going to repeat that across. So again, skip two stitches, and in the stitch after that, make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. When you get to the very end, you're going to have three stitches remaining, so you're going to skip two stitches, and in that very last stitch, which is going to be that chain one, that's where you're going to put your single crochet stitch in. So go ahead and repeat row two over and over again, and I will show you what the end dishcloth looks like, as well as tell you how many rows that I completed. Okay, so I'm coming up to the last stitch of my dishcloth. And I ended up making 25 rows. You can always make this longer if you would like. So then to end your dishcloth, you're just going to cut a tail. You want to leave a little bit so you can weave that in. You're going to yarn over, pull through, and then pull to tighten. And then you can go ahead and weave in your ends. But this is what the finished dishcloth looks like. And I just made one in those three different colors. You can always match your different colors to match your kitchen. You can match a friend's kitchen or family members if you want to give them away as gifts. They're also really fast and quick to make for upcoming craft fairs. So I highly recommend. And like I said, it just gives it a little bit of texture. And you can make this in any color combination that you would like. So thank you so much for joining me today on learning how to make the sedge stitch dishcloth. I hope you enjoy today's tutorial. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me. And as always, happy crocheting! Bye!